Hello girls, welcome back to the lecture series on postcolonial writings. Today we will look into the postcolonial theatre in detail. Postcolonial drama is the way in which performance has been instrumental in resisting the continuing effects of imperialism. It brings to bear the latest theoretical approaches from postcolonial and performance studies and performance studies to a range of plays from Australia, Africa, Canada, India, New Zealand, Sri Lanka, the Caribbean islands and other former colonial regions. Postcolonial playwrights have served not only as the playwrights of protest but also as figures resisting the colonization of their native cultures. Some of the major topics discussed in the postcolonial drama include uh, these are considered as the major themes that you can see in common in the postcolonial drama. The interactions of postcolonial other and performance, the postcolonial restagings of language and history, the specific enactments of ritual and carnival that you can see in most of the African playwrights' uh, plays, the theatrical citations of the postcolonial body combines a rich intersection of theoretical approaches with close attention to the wide range of performance texts. So these are some of the major themes or topics that you can see in common in the postcolonial uh, theatre or postcolonial drama across the world. Postcolonial performance shows the following features. The acts that respond to the experience of imperialism, whether directly or indirectly, and there will be acts performed for the continuation or regeneration of the colonized communities. There will be acts performed with the awareness of and sometimes the incorporation of post-contact forms, acts that interrogate the hegemony that underlies imperial representation. So these are some of the major points that um, actually you can see in the uh, performance level. Post-colonial theater is drama that focuses on issues surrounding oppressed peoples in some cases where the process of acculturation has been thorough postcolonial plays have revealed elements of culture destroyed by the colonizers cultural revival serves as a powerful force in the establishment and creation uh, of independent nationhood by exploring the indigenous myths of a place and people before the arrival of Western culture, postcolonial playwrights have attempted to aid in the reclamation of cultural memory and to assert the colonized peoples as legitimate and historical communities, that is, as true nations. The, such a display of these indigenous myths can be seen in the uh, play that you have to study in your syllabus, that is, the strong breed, indigenous myths and superstitions that is well displayed in that play. Postcolonial literature and theatre deal with the question of subaltern finding his voice. Subaltern of uh, the term you will be familiarizing with or um, you will be associating with Gayatri Chakravarti Spivak, one of the famous postcolonial critics. Her famous essay can the subaltern speak all these things you will be learning in your theory class later um, in your uh, um, higher studies a subaltern is a person in a subordinate position and the term has come to refer to anyone who fights the process and results of colonial colonialism in examining many different postcolonial voices one can see many of the difficult issues raised including the intersections of nationalism, identity and race, and discern the ways in which many of the leading post-colonial playwrights have chosen to deal with these issues. And of course the voice of the other is one of the most prominent issues that will be dealt with in all the post-colonial writings voice of the other and this other that uh, term that you can relate to the subaltern or the marginalized or any person who is in the periphery of the society. A sense of nationhood is also deeply connected to the idea of racial identity. In many instances of colonialism, 
issues of race are pushed to the forefront and used as a tool of subjugation by the colonizers for some playwrights and theorists the quest for their own racial and cultural identity supersedes the quest for nationhood you can see the theoretical explanations for all these uh, concepts of nation and na- nationhood in homi ke baba's work on nation and narration for these writers the desire to assert their humanity after decades of oppression becomes one of the dominant themes in their works and all this uh, playwrights a colonized a once colonized people might feel that they must prove their worth to the world which often tends to identify them as less important than their counterparts of the european ancestry the emergence of playwrights from formerly colonized countries has introduced a host of issues to the theatrical world for one thing playwrights have been forced to choose whether or not they will write in their indigenous language or in the language of the colonizer and the writers like achebe and all were strictly against choosing the language of the colonizer uh, and they stick on to their native language but at the same time some other people others believed that they should um, accept the colonizer's language in order to get a wide reach This has been a sensitive topic because some post-colonial playwrights insist that to write in the language of the colonizer is implicitly to endorse the actions of colonization. Others have trained in the language of colonizer find its use revolutionary. They claim that the writing in the language of the oppressors liberates the language and allows the message to spread beyond a localized audience. This is actually there is only a minor group who followed this idea this with the emergence of post colonialism and the seminal texts along with the publication of atibes things fall apart all these beliefs uh, were changed because they uh, stuck on to the native language and another indigenous uh, kind of english called african english developed after that these playwrights have also had to wrestle with issues of performance and style many post colonial authors have chosen to reject the realistic or conventional play format of the colonizer and have instead turned to ancient or indigenous performance forms such as dance for the first generation of post colonial dramatists a primary function of their writing and activity as directors and producers was to create a national body of drama that could culturally support the political process of nation building this was a project that included identifying and helping to eradicate the damaging effects of the colonial experience and simultaneously retrieving the representing indigenous histories the social and cultural traditions of the people their own narratives and discourses for example in the plays like dream on monkey mountain uh, which was written by derek walcott a west indian playwright and uh, a play called a drama of the forest uh, the na- written by nigerian dramatist mole soinga reflected on the challenges facing their new nations in dramaturgies that combined their authors sophisticated knowledge of european and african models acquired during their university education abroad also similarly in south africa in the intensifying grip of the apartheid system the earliest plays of the white playwright atul fogard emerged from his acquaintance with the black township life of the late 1950s and the young black intellectuals and performers based in them ray lawler's summer of the 17th doll which was published in 1955 marked a breakthrough in the decolonization of the australian theater but the radical change there as in canada and new zealand came in 1960s and 70s when a new generation of theater venues and playwrights often taking their inspiration from the experimentalism of the american british alternative theater of the 60s introduced what audiences and critics recognized as genuinely contemporary vernacular wish, ver, uh, versions of local and national experience these are certain examples you don't need to uh, 
போண்ட மச் பானே தட்ஸ் வை நாட் இட் இஸ் நாட் கிவன் ஆஸ் பாயிண்ட்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் டு மேக் த திங்ஸ் கிளியர் ஐ ஹாவ் கிவன் தோஸ் எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் அன்டில் தி இன்ட்ரொடக்ஷன் ஆஃப் மெஜாரிட்டி ஆஃப் டெமோக்ராட்டிக் கவர்மெண்ட் இன் நைன்டீன் நைன்டி ஃபோர் சவுத் ஆஃப்ரிக்கன் தியேட்டர் வாஸ் டாமினேட்டட் பை தி டிசைர் டு ரெசிஸ்ட் அண்ட் ப்ரொடெஸ்ட் அகேன்ஸ்ட் த இஃபெக்ட்ஸ் பாலிட்டிக்கல் இக்கனாமிக் அண்ட் சோஷியல் ஆஃப் தி அப்பார்டேட் ரெஜீம் எஸ்பெஷலி இன் த வர்க்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஊக்கி வர்த்தி ஓங்கோ ஆச்சிபே ஒலசோங்க எக்ஸட்ரா யூ கேன் சீ த ரிஃப்ளெக்ஷன் ஆஃப் தென் பாலிட்டிக்ஸ் கரெக்ட் பாலிட்டிக்ஸ் யூ கேன் சீ இன் ஆல் தேர் ஒர்க்ஸ் இன்க்ளூடிங் த ஷார்ட் ஸ்டோரிஸ் in the process plays such as zisvi ban series debt the island statements after an arrest under the immorality act master harold boza albert etc and uh, the crea- their creators and for the quality and political significance of the theater in south africa as a whole they stood for the political quality or the reflection of south africa elsewhere on the continent the political failures and continuing economic decline as the prevalence of war and civil disturbance led to a serious drama that has consistently focused on issues of political and moral leadership as for example in the works of Volesoinga Ola Rotimi and Femi Ozofian in Nigeria Mohammed Ben Abdullah in Ghana Ugi Wationgo in Kenya and Sony Lebao Tanzi in Congo the plays of women and issues of sexuality religion deprivation and the role of family have been dramatized in the work of female dramatists such as ema eta edo wherever liking and des omi in the course of the last half century post colonial theater in english has become much more widely available studied and seen internationally Similar themes have been broached by minority playwrights in the old commonwealth countries. For instance, Jack Davis in Australia is an indigenous um, writer, playwright. As well as, uh, the, so this, um, and also another feminist collective named Sistren in Jamaica. These are the uh, things we can mention, uh, which actually brought in this minority culture. the need for a theater that provides in bolay soinga's words a voice of vision for the future of the nation is likely to ensure its continuing dynamism in the years to come in the course of the half, um, last half century as we mentioned earlier post colonial theater in english has become more uh, widely available it spread uh, yeah for example for white australians canadians new zealanders um, there is now a secular national theater culture that barely existed in the 1950s so after the post war uh, period uh, there was uh, no such thing called an organized uh, this theatrical practice so that got revived even a relatively developed african economy like nigeria has a long way to go in establishing the kind of facilities and productivity that theater practitioners there would like to enjoy but also there are other certain limitations because uh, the local publication of drama, drama texts is either unknown or limited schools colleges and universities often lack the 21st century resources for theater and uh, even though they have remained central to the development of serious drama in english popularity of other media television of course but also the flourishing of the indigenous video drama industry in africa has been a challenge to live live theater of every kind so these were some of the entrances that came in the way but while in so many people in post colonial nations remain mired in poverty and the mercy of corrupt and ineffective leaders the need for a theater that provides in sowing as words like a voice of vision for the future of the nation this theater actually stands as a direct protest against what is uh, happening in then in the society as well as in their politics The post-colonial drama includes the plays of the dramatists like Ola Soinga from Nigeria, Girish Kanat from India, Ethel Fugard from South Africa, Jack Davis from Australia, of course, he is an indigenous writer, Vincent O'Sullivan from New Zealand, 
Ki Tuan Chi from Malaysia, Derek Walcott from St. Lucia, West Indies. So you can see from divergent places these people emerge. So with divergent cultures across the world. Although these dramatists reflect different histories and cultures, they share the common condition of cultural subjugation which has informed their dramas. So here is a uh, light, a very light introduction on the post-colonial theatre. You don't have to deal with in detail. That is why um, for your syllabus there is no uh, thing that is to be in-depth to be dealt with. So I am uh, stopping here with the this post-colonial introduction to post-colonial theatre. And in the next session we will look into the place of um, life and works and the contribution of Ole Soinga to the African theatre. Thank you. Have a wonderful day ahead.